All right, so uh, here's the main tank. Um, I'll give you a bit of a better video of the inhabitants um, soon, but I'm sure you've all seen pictures and videos of it before. But uh, the point of this video is more to show you um, under the bonnet and behind the scenes of what makes the tank run. Um, I guess we can start off by uh, taking a look at the, um, the lighting. I run uh, three GHL Mitrus LEDs. Uh, I'll be totally honest with you. I bought these things secondhand about five years ago. I believe they were a good three or four years old then, which makes them heading up towards eight or nine years old. And they're still uh, the, probably the main lighting for my tank in that um, the halos only run for five hours a day. And the LEDs run for about eight and a half, nine. So um, obviously when the halos are on, the uh, LEDs kind of uh, don't do a lot because they're two 400 watt radium halides um, that run magnetic ballasts. Um, to deal with all that heat, whoops, pan the camera the other way. Um, I have a number of fans um, in there. Sorry about the uh, strobe effect on the camera here, but uh, a number of fans there that switch on when the tank gets hot. Um, everything else is pretty, uh, pretty usual in there. I mean, <laughs> nothing much else to see really. I mean, it's a hood that just kind of covers a bit of that. The lighting used to be down in the hood, but um, I found it was a little bit uh, spotlighty, so um, I raised it up. I used this um, uh, this aluminium uh, channel um, extrusion, is the word actually, uh, which makes it easy to um, bolt together and make the sort of lighting go wherever you want. Um, I've got some different length struts that I use to, um, if I decide I want to raise the lighting or lower the lighting, I just take out. Um, these bits here, and I've got some that are a bit shorter and some are a bit higher, but um, I find this height seems to work the best. All right, so uh, here's the magic uh, room of what makes this uh, reef tank here tick, and um, pretty well effectively the rest of my tanks, because this is one of the few that actually has a sump. In fact, technically it's the only one that has a sump. The rest are, uh, one's only got a uh, back section and the others don't have sumps at all, so. Um, it's pretty crowded and it's got a lot of gear in here, um, more than this tank needs, but uh, that's because it's running all of my tanks. Anyway, enough rambling. Um, if you don't like messy wiring or messy things at all, look away. Um, we'll start off on the left side, I got my uh, power controller there. That's just uh, a rack of PDUs into a um, server cabinet. Just keeps all, well, it's meant to keep all my wiring tidy, it doesn't really, but um, makes it easy for me to switch things on and off. Um, gets rid of as many power boards as I can because they're a bit of a trap. Um, on the back wall there I've got uh, my taps for return pump, full siphon and half siphon. Uh, you can kind of see me on there, I've got a couple of uh, MP40 controllers, my pH controller for calcium reactor, um, and hiding over the back there is also a Tunzi multi-controller. Uh, I've got a temperature controller on there, I've got a mobile phone which is for power outage alarms, I've got a uh, remote control there which allows me to switch the pump on at the IBC if I need to do a large water change in conjunction with these taps over here that are set to uh, drain this <coughs> tank if I need to and the one down there which um, opens up the line from the IBC when I switch on that remote control. All right, um, yeah, a heap of messy wiring, we won't talk about that. Got a um, KH Guardian down here, which is just temporarily sitting there for the moment. I've got uh, Thomas Cheer from Anything Acrylic making me up a wicked mount for it. And then I'll be able to tidy up some of that there. All right, the sump itself. Okay, so coming through our overflows, we go through filter socks. We come into the skimmer section, which is where I have my RLSS. Uh, I believe it's an R10 from memory. Um, it's got a, um, a vast head cleaner on it. Um, it has this, which is just a uh, CO2 scrubber. Um, just two little fishies, um, carbon dioxide remover. And um, we tried their CDX uh, media, but uh, it worked fine. I just found a larger um, scuba diver place, which sells it, sells it by uh, nine kilos at a time rather than 500 grams. So um, I just topped that off. Basically all it is is this, this skimmer intake, air intake here. I have a T here because it, um, one side goes off to my ozone and this side uh, pulls through this basically almost a muffler um, which is just full of uh, the carbon dioxide removal media. And uh, the other thing you probably can't see there, I threw the garden hose there, my skimmer is hard plumbed to the drain so um, that's got its pros and cons, it means the skimmer neck's always clean with the neck cleaner and it means it's always drained because it's always going off um, to the drain. Also means I don't know how much skimmer I'm pulling out, and if the skimmer goes burko, 
um, which is actually going to be funny there because I just put in some um, trace elements and uh, amino acids before. Um, but yeah, if the skimmer goes crazy, I don't actually know how much um, I'm skimming and I've just got to be cautious of that. So I don't recommend that for everyone. Uh, next along in the sump is uh, my two, uh, two little fishies, uh, 150 reactors here. I just run Aqua Forest GFO in one and their carbon. Sorry, I use Ultimate Aquacare Carbon in the uh, next. Scooting over to the next section, I've got a Geo Calcium Reactor that's not running as a calcium reactor. This one's set up as a sulfur reactor, um, which just means it's kind of hard to see in there, but it means it's full of uh, sulfur beads and a little bit of uh, coral bone or skeleton. Uh, this just helps with my nitrates. Um, I run a pretty heavy fish load and uh, they put me on the sulfur reactors a while ago and to be honest I find them um, so set and forget. I pull that out maybe once a year, pull all the detritus out of the um, out of the media and uh, we're good to go. Uh, coming along through next, so I've got my, uh, just here's the top off for the um, uh, Spectra Pure um, Auto Top Off. And then uh, in behind there, kind of hard to see, it's in relatively poor shape these days because it gets a bit neglected. But it's my Corallin Calcium Reactor and it's currently taking CO2 in now. The CO2 bottles um, in the other room in the laundry um, under the basin there, which is where all of these uh, drain lines go to as well. So I've got a few lines going in and out of there. And uh, finally down to my return pump, uh, which yeah, people may be surprised that in this tank it's just a uh, RLSS Waveline return pump. Um, I've had that on the tank now for um, coming up to four or five years and um, uh, it's basically not Mr. Beat but um, I do plan on upgrading that to an Abyss because I've got an Abyss on my uh, other frag pump, other frag tank which you'll see soon and uh, it's an absolute beast. Alright, uh, up here I've got uh, a Kamoa dosing pump and a Slave and uh, give me seven channels of dosing. Uh, to be honest, I don't use them all at the moment. I've got, uh, if I want to, I've got alkalinity and magnesium um, there to just help manipulate levels if um, they get out of whack. I don't really use them that often, to be honest, because the calcium reactor takes care of that. But I do also have uh, some potassium, strontium, and uh, some other minor trace elements hooked up there, which I just go through a little bit. Uh, at the moment, I'm manually dosing the uh, Coral Essentials range, um, just while I get a handle on that, keep track of it. Oh, I can point out, I've got a um, Debari UV reactor in the corner there. Um, and my Milwaukee Digital Refractomer, which I just check the salinity each day. Um, mainly because they run an auto water change system and also because the skim is hard plumbed. I um, just like to keep an eye on the salinity to make sure that um, it's not drifting away on me. Uh, the mentioned auto water change setup, if I can get the camera to pan up, there we are, there's the litre meter there, that's the pump that's bringing water in, and over up in the corner there, kind of hard to see, is the, um, the pump that pumps water out to the next tank. Um, I know there's a whole heap happening in here, but uh, it, it's a crowded space, but it, it works. Um, thankfully most things are fairly automated, so I don't have to get in there too often. Um, got the KH Guardian making sure that the calcium reactor is doing everything it should. Uh, and that reports up onto the web, my calcium, uh, sorry, my alkalinity levels, uh, which lets me know if I need to make any adjustments to the pH of the calcium reactor. I test maybe once a month, um, sometimes a bit more frequent if I'm unsure on something. Um, but everything's, I mean, the tank's a few years old now, so it's pretty well an autopilot. Um, I just let it do its thing. And uh, yeah, the results speak for themselves, really. I mean, the tank's growing like a beast. So um, that's enough on this tank. Let's move on to the next one, which I promise you is a lot more simple. All right, uh, over here on the uh, kitchen bench is uh, my next tank. I say next, however, it was actually my first tank. Uh, this is what I bought to see whether I could do this reef tank um, thing. I bought this um, Red Sea Max 130 secondhand um, as an empty tank and uh, found my way around the hobby, learning the ins and outs of this. I tend to jump into the hob or any hobby that I do fairly quickly, um, but I honestly wasn't sure if I could handle this, so I just took my time and um, before getting that big custom tank built, we went with this and uh, got a handle of it within sort of six months to a year and had the um, main tank built. But once the main tank was set up, um, we sort of fell in love with the, with the animals we had in this tank and didn't want to um, sell them off. And uh, I got maybe a little bit of leaders then and didn't want to have just basic Oki clowns in, um, in my main tank. So uh, we was gonna have to sell them off and my wife wasn't too keen on that. So. Um, 
We moved the tank over to the kitchen bench and uh, still get a lot of enjoyment out of it today. But uh, this tank's um, yeah, really pretty simple. It's got a um, MP40 on the side. Um, it runs a uh, Typhon, I always want to say Typhoon, but I believe it's Typhon LED controller with, uh, if I can open up here, it's a Steve's LED. Um, it's kind of hard to see on the video there, but they're not the power compacts anymore. It's an LED retrofit. Um, uh, the Typhon just controls four channels of LEDs there. One's an MP10, which is a second handy I bought many years ago. It's pretty noisy now, but um, get used to the noise. In behind the soda stream here, I um, have my favorite devices, which is the liter meter. Um, that pulls, or water comes to this tank from a main tank. Um, it comes through the wall here out of the old foam plate, um, goes into the tank, and then that pump pumps out of this tank into the other room. Um, like I said, there's not a lot else on this tank. It does have an uh, Aquamedic Turbo Flow to Blue skimmer, which um, really doesn't do a lot because this tank gets 20 litres a day water change, uh, which seems to keep everything in check. I don't even run an auto top off in this tank. Um, it gets 20 litres a day change through it, which seems to keep things in check. And with the hood on it, it really doesn't evaporate that much anyway. So I check the salinity on it maybe once a month and um, I notice it doesn't change. It sits like one point higher than um, the other tank. It sits at about 1.026, 1.027. Um, I could put RO in it to bring it back to 025 or 026, but it's happily sitting at 026, 027, so I just leave it. Um, yeah, this tank's been running for a touch over five years now. Um, I've had uh, those clowns the whole time. Um, the uh, Orchid Dotty Back's a new, new addition. Uh, bike I've plenty of it in there for a while, and um, all these morphs um, took off from one single morph. I do have some slightly more fancy ones over this side. I love the orange one at the moment. Spotty green's getting big. Uh, that pink's pretty crazy and um, kind of hard to see there, but I've got a beautiful rose bubble tip up in there, which funnily enough, my clowns seem to like the uh, pale blue um, nems more. I don't know why, they look like they're bleached, but um, they continue to grow and split and look bubbly and happy. So I'm going to assume they're not splitting. Um, sorry, they're not, not bleached. Um, but uh, yeah, this tank's the definition of autopilot. I literally feed it once a day, that's it. Um, I don't test the water. I haven't tested the water on it for probably two years, um, other than salinity, which I would have done three or four months ago. And yeah, the water change takes care of everything. So um, I don't think I can talk much more about this. People, um, when I bought this tank, people said that these tanks overheated and uh, they had problems and that. To be honest, I found this tank to be an absolute dream. Uh, it was a perfect tank for a beginner to get into. Uh, it just, if I had a question, there was a lot of people online that were running the same tank, to tell me what skimmer to replace with, uh, gave me advice on the LED retrofit, um, gave me advice on the placement of the MP10, um, even as far as the rock structure and how much sand to use. It just made getting into the hobby really easy. So if uh, you're looking at starting off, we'll look into a Red Sea Max, um, or even one of their Red Sea Reefers, or another all-in-one tank. It takes a lot of those difficult decisions out of the fray for you and um, just allows you to enjoy the hobby. So anyway, that's enough of that tank. Let's move on to the uh, next room. All right, here we are. This is the fish room. This is uh, sort of my uh, getaway and uh, where I can store all my stuff for this hobby. Um, I guess I'll go around the room in uh, clockwise order. It doesn't make a lot of sense that way, but uh, We'll start off here because this is the latest tank. Um, you can tell by the diatoms on the sand that it's uh, still cycling. It's a uh, innovative marine nouveau. Uh, it will actually eventually be set up as a, um, a nano predator tank, but uh, for the moment it's while well, it's cycling, it's hosting these NEMs, which have just gone crazy. Um, I got uh, all these uh, crazily large green, supposedly bubble tips off a friend of mine here in Geelong, and uh, I'm just babysitting this uh, little red frosted uh, bubble tip, it doesn't look too red under these lights. Uh, it's just got the basic uh, Aqua and Marigolo LED on there for the moment, which will probably do the trick. Um, there's no sump on this tank, it's just got the uh, the overflow on the back here, which has just got the filter socks. Um, I've got some uh, uh, Kemi Pure um, Blue in there at the moment, just helping it pull all the silly gates and stuff out of the sand. Um, this uh, here is because I'm yet to hook up my auto water change to the setup yet. This will just have the um, lines in and out. Um, and uh, there's the liter meter ready to go for it. 
just um, waiting on a bit more John Guest tubing to come in. And uh, yeah, the plan for this tank is basically um, a small puffer, a, a few Manchu lionfish, and uh, maybe a leaf. Um, should be pretty cool. I've got a, um, a top lids custom uh, lid coming for it. Well, that's floating in the water there. But maybe a bit of plastic from the bag of the sand. Cool. Um, which will just keep uh, little fingers out of there because yeah, there will be some predators in there, and uh, yeah, I don't want anyone getting there, getting themselves hurt. Anyway, over to the next tank. Uh, this is uh, my first frag tank. Um, it's getting fairly well overtaken. I try to strip out the zoas and uh, things out of there as quick as I can, but um, it grows pretty hardcore. I run, um, let's pan up, another radium 250 watt halide on this tank. Um, it has a uh, MP40 on the side. It has, this is actually, I should show you this. It's only one of my tanks that has a chiller, um, yet ironically the chiller barely ever gets used. Um, the fans do the trick, even with the halide in this tank. I run a uh, Aquarium Industries calcium reactor. Um, I do have a bit of a closed loop setup going here with a, um, a Royal Exclusive uh, Red Level 3 pump. Uh, that's really about it. I do have a little uh, uh, water housing which just holds um, some, some uh, aquaforest uh, bio media and a little bit of GFO in the back one just to keep things uh, clean and tidy. Um, this tank also has once again really messily for the moment. Uh, hidden out the back it's got a uh, Kel sorry, uh, Alka I'll start again, a KH Guardian which monitors your alkalinity um, and I've got a uh, the gas bottle for the calcium reactor and things out the back there. Um, it's a pretty basic tank but uh, I'll give you some footage of um, how the corals and stuff are doing in there. I just have to say my word, it looks killer. Um, the corals are growing so well in there. You can see up in this corner here, I had a little cyano outbreak a little while ago. Well, no, I have a little cyano outbreak now. I had a major one before, which wiped out a bit of stuff and browned out a lot of other things, but um, it's bouncing back. I gave it a course of Dr. Tim's um, uh, biotics and stuff there, and uh, probiotics, and um, yeah, it's looking really well. All right, over to the next tank, which is my clown tank. Um, this is where eventually the uh, anemones from uh, that are currently in my credit tank over there will come. Um, I'm just working out what's going on with the anemones in this tank at the moment. Um, it did have it absolutely swarming, and for some reason, within a week, they all reduced and shrank, and three quarters of them died. So I'm not exactly sure why. I'm just keeping an eye on that lemon peel. I've got well, I've got three maybe four culprits. That lemon peel is my major culprit because uh, she's in this tank because she's been a pain everywhere else, so I'm instantly going to blame her. Um, the next option is the uh, cleaner wrasse, that's uh, cleaner wrasse, red line cleaner shrimp because I've seen it uh, basically tear them apart but I'm not sure if that's the cause or the symptom. Um, there is also a hermit in there which I should pull out because I have also seen him uh, tear them apart and finally, um, as you can see probably from all of the algae on the rocks, uh, this tank, uh, because I had 40 juvenile clowns go in there, um, I've still got about 34 I think, it might not look like it, but there are 34 clowns on there. Um, uh, I was feeding it really heavy multiple times a day, so nutrients did get up a little bit. Um, I now run a sulfur reactor on there to help get that down, and also an algae scrubber. Um, this is a Tunzi, I can't remember the model name, but the um, Tunzi skim is um, well oversized for it, I can see I do absolutely attack the, um, the, the cup to fit it in there, but uh, it still works a treat, pulls out ridiculous amounts of skimmate. You can probably tell from the wave on the tank uh, that I run wave boxes in this, uh, mainly because the idea is that it's to be swimming with NEMS, and I don't want uh, power heads in there that they can get chewed up in, so this tank I've put together especially for clowns and uh, NEMS, so it's been put together that way. Um, I'd like to get it back to its former glory. Hiding over here in the corner is a little bit of uh, the engine room for a few things in here. I've got a um, RO reservoir there which gets automatically topped off um, each morning by the uh, litre meter system there. Got a couple of uh, chemicals, I've got some uh, more litre meter pumps, got our um, security system there. I, I do also have uh, this unit down here is the, um, uh, what's it called, humidity controller. Um, when the humidity gets over 50% in here, it's, um, turns on, whoops, no, you turn the pump up over, uh, up this way, 
that vent there is actually an inlet, it's not an outlet, and that sucks the humidity out of the room um, and off into um, outside. So, um, yeah, basically, it just stops the humidity building up in this room because in uh, summer it could get a little bit steamy in here, and I was just worried about the carpet and the plaster lasting. So, it's a bit messy over there, but it's more um, business. I've also uh, recently installed um, split system aircon just because, uh, yeah, this room could get to like 50 or 60 degrees in summer, uh, mainly because uh, these walls or this, these tanks here back onto the garage, and the garage gets ridiculously hot, faces west, and in the summer it was out of control. Plus I've got a few halides in here and LEDs and it all just kind of builds up. Now this tank here is my uh, new frag tank. We're not going to look at the um, inside of it too much because it's not very old and I just scrubbed all the uh, algae off in there so it looks like milk at the moment um, and it's still cycling but I can show you the, uh, the engine room to it and I run uh, an abyss pump on this with an ocean's motion controller um, which is just an absolute beast. It moves a lot of water, creates a really nice wave effect, um, and does it all silently and using hardly any power. It's crazy. Um, I have a number of um, uh, wireless power controllers here, which I think I've shown a video of these before. It's what I call my four man's um, Apex. They're like $20 each, and they give you four controllable outputs to connect to the internet. Um, pretty crazy. Um, I've got a small geo calcium reactor on this tank. Um, yeah, I love my calcium reactors and I love geos. They're a nice, nicely built unit. I've got a uh, Bashi reactor, which I will put some uh, media in there soon. Uh, probably some large GFO, not the fine stuff. I think Aquamedic make a nice large pellet GFO. Uh, maybe a little bit of carbon and maybe, um, we'll see, yeah, maybe a little bit of sulfur. We'll see um, just how the water parameters go. There's the gas bottle for the calcium reactor. I run the uh, carbon doser regulators on most of my calcium reactors. They're just the best. They're not cheap, but geez, they're nice. You literally dial in on that knob there. The uh, number of seconds per bubble, um, you can dial it down to the point where you're spitting out like five bubbles a second, or you can slow it down uh, to a maximum of one bubble every 10 seconds. It's just, makes life setting up a calcium reactor so much easier. It gives you such a great level of control. And uh, this tank runs uh, digital ballasts for the halides. Um, I run magnetic ones and everything else, but uh, I bought this light um, off a fellow reefer and it came with a digital ballast, so I thought I'd give them a shot. Uh, yeah, they seem fine. I haven't seen any real difference, to be honest. Um, maybe they use less power, maybe not, I don't know. Magnetic ones are cheaper, so I'd probably just use them if I had to buy them new, but um, seeing they came with it, why not? Uh, one thing I can show you up here is uh, I run a uh, Hamilton light on this one. I use the same aluminium extrusion um, that I've made other light frames out of. Um, it has two, uh, two 250 watt halides. Let's see if I can get up in there. Uh, yep. And uh, four 80 watt T5s. It's also got a, uh, I think it's, I can't remember the name, a Build My LED, LED strip on the back. Um, you can see poorly mounted there, the temperature controller. I run a temperature control on every one of my tanks. Um, you can also see some of the John Guest lines in and out here. Uh, they basically cover um, water, automatic water in, automatic water out, um, ATO in, and uh, the inlet and outlet for the um, calcium reactor. I should mention the calcium reactor is fed by the um, RKS Vario Blue 2 pump. And I got a little step down converter there just because uh, the ocean motion I'm using this one is 110 volt um, one, and rather than changing it to a 240 volt motor, I had one of these step down converters, so I thought I'd use it. Um, I've got a nice little acrylic floor in there just in case there are any spills. Uh, I was a little bit nervous about the closed loop on this system because it's got a lot of holes in the base, but um, it's been faultless. Beautiful work by um, David Deer Park. Um, I did also forget to mention this tank uh, runs, this is my clown tank, it has two AI primes on it. Seems to be more than enough light. Um, I'm not sure if I mentioned also that it runs a, a algae scrubber. Um, that thing just pumps out the um, algae. This is sort of what everyone had before um, those uh, algae reactors. Uh, it's a Santa Monica turf scrubber. Um, works a treat. This tank um, does not run a sun. Um, this is just messy storage. So it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's a lot happening in an all, well, I call it an all-in-one tank. It's not, it's just your basic fish tank. 
um, just has uh, two wave boxes, a uh, skimmer, algae scrubber, and a uh, now sulfur reactor. You see I run a temperature controller over there, like I do on every one of my tanks. This one's got a large fan on it because it can get hot. And uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Sorry for talking too fast, but um, this video is already getting up around like the 15, 20 minute mark and wanted to cover as much as we could. Oh yeah, I can show you this. I forgot that a lot of people have asked about this. This is a, um, step back a bit so you can see it. This is my uh, workbench in my fish room. It's um, uh, just a um, Ikea kitchen, uh, portable kitchen. They, um, yeah, I think they're about 150, 160 bucks. Stainless comes with a kitchen sink, which you can put these little uh, strainers in. Um, you can get these little storage tubs, which just hook onto the back. It's awesome. It gives me room to set up my um, fragging or um, yeah, just to prepare new corals or you know, inspecting them or doing whatever I need to do before putting them in the tanks. I set myself up there. It also holds all my fish food and end pallets and things like that. If you've got room and you're looking for something like that, can't recommend them enough. All right. Uh... If you've got this far, that means you've obviously um, in, been enjoying the video so far and um, probably by now know more about my uh, reef tanks than I do myself. So um, thanks for watching and um, feel free to shoot me through any questions at all that you have. I'll do my best to answer them. Um, I would like to point out that I definitely don't profess to, to say that I have my tank set out in the most perfect way, um, textbook way or the best way you should or the best way your friends should, anything like that at all. I've set them out the way that works for me um, and so far it's working pretty good. I've got um, six tanks now and um, on the whole they're all running pretty well so um, it's it's been successful. You're just watching a bit of footage now of um, uh, just some live video of, of um, my main tank and uh, the fish swimming around there and I must admit it looks pretty good. I wish I closed the curtains just to the left of the tank so you didn't get that glare but um, Hey, it just goes to show that um, yeah, we all make mistakes and um, even though I've taken that same video a few times, uh, I still obviously forgot to close the curtain, so sorry about that, but uh, hopefully you can still see um, all the corals there and um, yeah, anyway, once again, enough rambling from me. Um, thanks for following along and um, send me through any questions. Cheers.